What is up, everybody, and welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm Jacob Turner. He's THI publisher Andrew Jones. And AJ, we're here for another episode of the UNC football show. Is It is officially that time of the week again. And we've got a ton of things to talk about, like we always do. We always have kind of a rundown we're going to go through. Looking back at the week a little bit and obviously looking ahead to the UVA game this weekend as well, 6.30 p.m. kickoff in Keenan Stadium. That game will be on the CW Network. Carolina currently a 23.5 point favorite right now. It's a big spread right there, AJ. I don't know if that might be a little bit too big, but th- that's a big spread. And we'll talk about Carolina's mindset going into this game and the importance of preparation this week and it being good preparation this week as this is not a game that Carolina can overlook despite the spread being as high as it is. Before we dive into it, the show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. Stay tuned for that. But I want to start where we always tend to start, AJ, because this is what this is what fans like to talk about. I have a ton of fans that that I know just, and I'm, I'm sarcastic with this, that, that, that just absolutely love, you know, that hour before kickoff when Carolina releases the injury information. I've got a few that are always like just joking with me that there's always somebody on that list that you're like, wait, where'd he come from? Like this guy's hurt. He's not playing. I thought he was day to day, blah, blah, blah. So we'll talk about injuries to start out. Cause I know it's a hot topic amongst Carolina fans. And obviously they, they want to have a healthy team going into the, the rest of the season, especially where, with where this team is at right now. So what updates can you give us on the injury front uh, at the Keenan football center right now? Well, first of all, I have to correct you. You do have thousands of fans. I know <laughs> I walk the concourse and people stop me and I'm thinking, Oh, Hey, you know, they want to talk to me. And I'm like, you know, Jacob Turner. I'll get out of here. Uh, man. No, no, no. Yeah. I know Jacob. Impossible, impossible. Do you know Dina King? I mean, yeah, that's guy, Dean right? is the rock star. Me and me and you, we're in the back, man. Dean is the rock star. It's like that balance. Seinfeld episode with the maestro when uh, <laughs> it's like the sign poster of the, four tenors or whatever and they name them off and then the other guy i'm the other guy <laughs> that's us. we're the other guys yeah <laughs> i'm the other guy on seinfeld <laughs> um injuries this week gavin blackwell's coming along we've talked about him a little bit he had a concussion there there is no pattern set timeline for concussion no nah, no nah. uh, for guys to overcome concussions they have to go through the protocols and everything and then really it just hits certain people different. I I had a buddy that got a concussion in high school and he played the next week. He was fine. And of course that's in the eighties. We didn't really have. Yeah. I about to say, I don't know if that's happening nowadays. (laughs) I mean, that's when we used to drink water out of a bucket with a, with a, with a Lytle. Yeah. (laughs) And and there might be some grass in there. And if you got a piece of grass in there, don't ever let a coach see you pull that grass out. No, man, you better drink that grass. So I guess maybe that's not a good frame of reference, but probably probably. uh, I think you'll start seeing more of him moving mm-hmm. forward and they need to, cause they don't, other than doc Chapman's one snap, the starting three wide receivers played the entire game. They, mm-hmm. they, there were no other receivers that got on the field. So they need him and they need some other receivers to get on the field. We could talk about that some other time. Yeah. Also, I'm trying to think of some of the other um, guys that are banged up. Let's see Travis Shaw. He mm-hmm. got dinged up during warmups on Saturday. I think you saw him get dinged up or saw him go to the tunnel yeah. during the game. I saw him before the, yeah, just, you know, talking to the trainer a little bit and it, upper body injury, correct? I, I, if I, yeah, if I they're monitoring correctly. him this week. And I, I they have so much depth that they don't have to rush a guy out there if he's not 100% ready. They did that with Ritzy in the Syracuse game. I think he played three snaps. Mm-hmm. And he was a little bit dinged up, and then they had such a big lead, there was no point in sticking him out there. So, and then Kevin Hester, by the way, last week was in a boot, and yeah. ended up playing on Saturday. Gene Chizik said that you know he didn't think he thought it was maybe forty, sixty he would play. Wow. Not only did he play, but he played forty snaps or something like that, and played, played very, well. very well. Had one of his best games of the season. So they are pretty healthy. I mean, they've got guys that are dinged up, but nothing that's really worth mentioning here because we could probably list every guy and say bruised ribs or whatever and they just play they play through it there's mac often says there's a difference between being hurt and being injured yeah everybody's hurt but if injured is when it crosses into the territory where you really can't go and right now they're 
pretty healthy football team side, obviously Pesor and some of the guys that are out and, and the Pesor clarification, just so people know, we knew about that last week, a couple of the media outlets, the main media outlets that cover UNC knew about Pesor long before we announced it. We got the confirmations, but we were asked to hold off on reporting it until we went ahead and this, the two of us, the other network and I and us, we decided, we agreed we would put it out when the players came out for warmups on Saturday because people would see that Pesor wasn't out there. So we, yeah. we released it at the same time. Now, I was originally told he's out for the season. And then they amended it after talking with him that it was more six to 12 weeks and he had the surgery. He had surgery quickly, which is mm-hmm. a good sign because sometimes – they hold off because they want swelling to go down. So it must have been a clean break, mm-hmm. which means that it might be a quicker recovery than initially anticipated. So they're, st- they, they're still holding out hope that he could come back and play. If it's six weeks, he could be back for NC State or the ACC championship game. And if he is, they'll take him because he's a very good player. He's one of their – he would be one of their four – Mm-hmm. top receivers so that Absolutely. would enhance that that would enhance that crew especially if anybody else gets dinged up so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's pretty much it on the injury front yeah uh, so, well ben Kiernan's yeah. out for the season yeah how when was the last time a college football team lost their starting place kicker and starting punter for the season i know right i mean that does not happen very often just and no i way. did ask we had tom mcginnis he's now the punter and guys i'm pushing people toward our interview videos it's a good you interview. watch it it's a he's good australian mm-hmm. there's a lot of cool stuff there with it and the plan for him was to just not play this year was to serve as an apprentice behind ben kiernan and then he would have three years where he could play because he's a sophomore he's a 22 year old sophomore but uh he was he was forced to play last week because kiernan was out and i asked him the other day because because he played australian rules football for years growing up in Australia. And that's sort of a cross between rugby. It's a lot, a lot of yeah. rugby. You, you got to yeah, be yeah. A, a bad, you know, ASS to play yeah. Australian rules football. And I asked him, I said, so if you get a punt blocked and the ball bounces in front of you and you pick it up and run, well, might you run a guy over that Ben Kiernan couldn't run over? And he was laughing and had a good time with it. So he said, yes, but he's kind of paranoid right now. You would probably just go down because he'd be afraid to run because he's still learning the game. Another funny thing about Tom McGinnis as well, I asked him about watching football. I said, what do you look for? And he said, when I watch games, I hope for three and out so they can get right to the punt because his favorite part (laughs) is the punting. That is interesting angle to think about as a punter watching football, how you – Probably an Australian punter. Yeah. A guy who didn't know how to put on the shoulder pads when he got to Chapel Hill. Yeah. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. I know Max – He doesn't fully understand the game. Didn't he like buy, Mac? I think Max said in his interview on Monday that he like bought a football uniform before he came here to like figure out how to put it on because he didn't, he never yeah. wore one like that. It's such uh, an interesting well, conversation. Well, since we're talking, Tom, again, whoever thought we we didn't plan on, we'd have a, a an Australian punter segment to the football show. But yeah, he didn't, he bought it and it didn't, it wasn't right, I guess. He <laughs> mail order football uniform. I remember I back you, in the, you know I remember back, way back, I'm dating myself here, when you could have these catalogs and you'd pick out a uniform that you'd want and you'd mm-hmm. order it from JC Penney's and it would come and it'd be like a plastic face mask and crap. It was terrible. He probably got something like that. Yeah, like the two it. stripes right here and the wrong Amazon, colors probably an Amazon just, special for sure. I'm sure. I'm oh sure you can probably God, buy no. something on Amazon. I would, have, and it'd probably be better now than they were back in the 1980s and 70s, back when <laughs> I was a tyke. But anyway, um, I think it's it's kind of a lot of cool stuff around his story, learning mm-hmm. the game. He said that he he made a mistake looking around Keenan before the game Saturday night, knowing he was going to play. He said he kind of amped up the nerves a little bit. And he doesn't fully have a grasp on everything that's going on. He just knows when they say punt team, he runs out there and kicks. That's it. awesome. So, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's. I hope we get him more often. It was a good interview. He's got a great attitude about things, and he's twenty two. So he's twenty two, and he's seventeen hours from home. To seventeen mm-hmm. hour time difference, fourteen hour flight. He's kind of living a neat little thing right now. He's doing a neat little thing in his life. So yeah, that's man. pretty cool. It's unique. It, it definitely is. And he, he, he punted pretty well against Miami too. I mean, he had some, a couple of really good punts, you know, put him in the he corner. Got, like, you know, he, he, yeah. he, he looked good in his debut. I mean, it wasn't like, he well, he did. 
shanked one in the upper deck or something. But. 38.3 yards, and people are going to look at that and say, oh, that's not that great. But they have to understand that there was a lot of placement involved there. So yes. for a guy who was going to serve the whole year as a redshirt, basically, and not play, to go into a game like that against an opponent like that in an atmosphere like that, and he did everything that they asked him to do. There were no mm-hmm. issues. So yeah. that's in a major plus moving forward because Kiernan's really good. He is, yeah. Ben Kiernan's really good, but Tom McGinnis could follow on that path. There's this tradition now of Australian punters. It's a pipeline coming to the States, and they 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 get to the NFL. There's quite a few in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And Carolina had one under Fedora. I, I'm blanking on his name. They, they, did, they did, and Miami had a big-time one here in the last few years, the most yeah. tattooed punter in the history of Was it of Tom punters, Shelton? Was that the punter for Tom Carolina? Shelton Tom Shelton at Carolina, Shelton? yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but there's quite a few the in the NFL. That. And and Tom said, and we'll get off this here in a second. People didn't click this to hear about punter, but it is interesting. It's an it important part of the game, too, that he was inspired by a buddy of his that uh, punted at Illinois. Mm-hmm. I guess it's in the NFL. I don't recall the name. but I don't either, but I remember him talking about that, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's interesting. 22, you get a free education at the University of North Carolina. You're from Australia. You get this neat opportunity to come to the, to the States and and – that's kind of neat. I mean, if if you're 22 and you can go to Australia and play something there and have your education paid for, that would be pretty cool. So yeah. I, I like stories like that. I like things that are a little bit unusual, and that's certainly an unusual story. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, moving it on, let's – I want to talk about – we'll put these two things kind of together. Carolina coming in at number 10 in the polls this week, so kind of a top 10 rating, undefeated. A lot of hype around the excitement around the program right now. And, and that leads to more national media chatter. I mean, I, it's crazy now because I'll go on YouTube and I've really noticed it over the past week or so, maybe, yeah, probably week or so, especially after the Miami game is I'll go on YouTube and, you know, suggestions will pop up and it's yeah. these outlets talking about Carolina football that you've never heard of, or just national media outlets that you have heard of that, you know, are usually talking about your Georgias and your, um, and your Notre Dames and, and your Ohio States, your Michigans, your programs like that. And now Carolina's yeah. coming into the conversation. It's really interesting to see how that shift has has changed in, you know, essentially through six games is I know Carolina was has been talked about more over the past couple of years because of some of their successes, because of Mac Brown, because of Drake May, and even going back to Sam Howell, but not really to this level. It felt like in the past it was if people are talking about Carolina, they're talking about Mac or they're talking about Drake or they're talking about Sam. They're not talking about North Carolina being a potential, you know, contender for the CFP. I mean, that's never been a topic of conversation really since Mac's come back. And that's the credit to the staff and how good this team and potential they have to potentially do something big this year. But it, my mind automatically goes to, you know, some just very old sayings of, you know, it's amazing how much winning solves everything. It's amazing how much everybody loves a winner. And it's just amazing how you start winning some football games. You start looking good as a football team in a program. And now everybody loves you and everybody wants to talk about it. It's amazing how quickly that narrative can shift though. And I think this is going to be the theme as we kind of move this show on of Carolina preparing for a team like UVA with the attention they're getting the standard that we've talked about, they have yeah. to be ready to play every week. Everybody's you this will be a, such a massive game for UVA. It always is because of the rivalry here, but because, Oh, we can go into Chapel Hill and beat an undefeated Carolina team and kind of spoil their season. Carolina is now hunted. People are talking about them. People now teams want to beat Carolina where in the past, maybe it was Carolina trying to beat some of these bigger programs. Carolina finds itself in that situation now. So it's fascinating just to see that, number 10 in the country, and just everybody's now talking about North Carolina, man. It, it really is amazing what winning does for, for a football team and a football program. Well, they're relevant. Yeah. So that's why they're being talked about. Now, there's two ways to look at this. A lot of the uh, basement podcasts that we that pop up on YouTube, they don't really know. I mean, that's fine. There's there's room for stuff like that out there. That's what I mean. Yeah, just see the ranking, you know. Oh, YouTube. they're top 10. Let's talk about them, yeah. It, it, to me, it's the national guys, because I like to listen to Sirius XM, uh, the uh, college football state radio station. I've been on there a few times, and and I think they do a really good job. If, if you listen enough, you'll hear some different media from this region that go on every once in a while to talk about teams in this region. And – Previously, when when Carolina would come up, it'd be kind of brief. It would always be Drake May. And, well, they outscore everybody or they're going to try to outscore everybody and the defense stinks. 
I was listening to the, the national show. I guess it was on my way back yesterday or Monday from Chapel Hill from the press conferences. And there was about two and a half minutes on Carolina and Drake's name didn't come up until the two, two and a half minute mark, like toward the end of it. And that was when it hit me. Okay. People are paying attention and they're paying attention beyond the surface because the surface is Drake. The -hmm. surface is Tez. Tez is on the surface now too. He's almost as well known as Drake is, but when you hear a national person mention Cedric Gray's name, Cedric just doesn't get a lot of attention for some, for whatever reason. He should. Then but he you, doesn't. Yeah, you're right. And mm-hmm. Cayman Rucker, because if you PFF is tweeting out every week, Cayman Rucker stuff because he's so highly graded and everything. Yeah. So Gene Chizik's name comes up. And they, and then when uh, I heard the other day, um, Roddy Jones, who on the ACC radio network, who does a really good job. I and mean, Roddy Jones, one of those guys that when he talks, I listen. And, and he was talking about Gene Chizik and the fact that the defense is better and that there's something different about this team. I and mean, you and I have been saying for a while there was something different. Mm-hmm. And it's always going to take the Nationals longer to catch on because they, I was with, when I was at Fox, I had to pay attention to the whole. ACC and the pro sports. And then for a while, when I was an interim national college basketball, right, I had to pay attention to the nation. It's not easy. No. It's not easy to have a finger on the pulse of everything that's going on, which is why you bring on the local guys that cover the teams. Cause they do have uh, their fingers on the pulse of what's going on. And what I'm seeing and hearing is that the nationals have a better idea of what's taking place now and why this team is very good in situating itself to potentially play some very significant games later in the season. It's not just the Drake May show. There are a lot of prongs to this story and, and, and this team being six and zero right now and having the potential to continue winning for the foreseeable future. So I think that that's neat. And I think that that's good for UNC because it's been a while since people peeled that onion. Mm-hmm. And now they're peeling the onion a little bit. So if the Tar Heels beat UVA like they should, and they win at Georgia Tech like they should, and they hammer Campbell like they should, and they're not know the week the Duke comes in, you know, the conversation topics narrow as the season goes on because the pool of contenders for the CFP narrow. And Carolina will still be in that pool in three weeks, assuming that there are no massive upsets in the next three weeks. So, People are going to start parsing who they are more and more. And there are no weaknesses. There are some areas that need to get better, but I would say that there are no weaknesses on this team, even with the special teams. I think there's a few tweaks they could make, but they'll get better. Mm -hmm. Maybe get a little older on the kickoff coverage and suddenly they're better. Mm -hmm. So people are going to figure that out. It's not just Drake. It's not just Tez. It's not just Omarion. There's a lot of positives to this group and it's kind of neat seeing the Nationals sort of come in and and pick up on some of this stuff. How much better do you think this team can still get? I'll tell you, um, I was – well, you and I were talking before the three things the other day, and – which is like a podcast it's in right. itself half the time because we'll sit there talking for 20 minutes. Know, before we, <laughs> we need to start recording that and throw it up. <laughs> after 1 a.m. and I looked up and I said, you know, because I asked a couple of the players after the game. I wanted to immediate, you know, that's usually a Monday or Tuesday question, but I wanted to ask it the other night because I wanted to get their immediate reaction because mm-hmm. they didn't play great, but they mm-hmm. still had a decisive win over a good team. Mm-hmm. And so when you and I were waiting to do our three things, I kind of looked up and I said, I don't know where that ceiling is. I can't see it. I think we used to be able to see maybe a sort of the imagery of a ceiling. I don't know. I talked to somebody in the program yesterday when I was leaving, uh, because I go to do my post Monday and post Tuesday stuff in the press box because they got an Ethernet hookup I can use. So it doesn't take 46 days to upload a video. He's not exactly. And, and when I was, I know when I left, I was on the concourse and I saw somebody in the program, somebody significant in the program. We talked for a minute and I just said, you know, I don't know where the ceiling is now. It, it's like the bar continues getting raised and that I, I don't really see the bar now. I think that when you play C plus and B minus games and you're up three touchdowns against Miami in the fourth quarter, that changes the narrative on where that ceiling might be in my opinion. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I think it's significantly high. I think it's playing important games in December high and maybe beyond. That's, I think, where they where they could be. Now, they have a lot to do to get there. They have to refine. And I think that's why this is cheese week in Chapel Hill, because that message is being sent to the team. That's why Max said Monday they had the harshest team meeting following a win of his career. Because it's sort of like when you're a ra- when you're a jockey riding a racehorse and you're making that last turn, you got a chance to win the race. You 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 know you whip the horse a little different than you mm-hmm. did at the first turn. Mm-hmm. I think that they understand that there's something huge that can be achieved, and they're coaching them differently. They're coaching them at that level. They're coaching them to nudge to continue pushing this club forward and finding every, um, every, everything, anything that they can use to their advantage to yeah. keep them fresh, keep them sharp and not let them get complacent comfort and complacency would be the worst thing that could happen to them right now. Cause they would end the season similar to how they did last year. Mm-hmm. And, I, and we, we said last year that maybe the best thing for the 2023 Tar Heels was to lose four in a row the way they did. Yeah, It wasn't ideal last year. You never want those things to happen on purpose, obviously. But if you're in the program and it does, make those things help you down the road. And I believe they have because Cedric was asked uh, yesterday, Tuesday about it. And he's like, we know what that we fell off a cliff. He said, we fell off a cliff. Yeah, they did. I mean, they, they, they know that feeling. They don't have to dig to find that. Mm-hmm. They know what it is. And so that serves as fuel right now. They have a lot of things that serve as fuel, but I think that's a driving force. And now they realize they can achieve some big time things that North Carolina teams generally don't even aren't even in the conversation to achieve. And they have a good group to, to lead them on that path. They have a mm-hmm. very mature, experienced and a smart group. These are football players who are also smart dudes. These are guys that if they weren't football players, people would see them as smart dudes. And I think that helps a lot right now. Yeah, it, it really is fascinating to to see what, you know, where this team's at right now and what they could potentially achieve because they've they've been so good through six games. And again, a lot of football left to be played. And, and that kind of feeds into what we're talking about and the focus of being this week with and what Max talked about a lot with with the cheese and you know uh, tell us about i know you put out a story yesterday um on tarhillillustrate.com check it out if you if you haven't seen it yet about the poisonous cheese and the example that matt gave going back way to his you know his best team they ever had at texas and the game against texas a&m they're losing at halftime bill parcells had called him earlier in that week and had offered a different perspective and a way of looking at where that Texas team was at that Mac hadn't really thought about before. So tell us about Bill Parcells poisonous cheese and the fact that Bryson Nesbitt talked about it earlier on Wednesday, there's cheese in the lockers of, of the players. Now it's, it's such a weird reference in a lot of ways, but when you understand it and you read the story and you hear what, how it was phrased to Mac and the approach that he's taken, it, it really does make a lot of sense. And it is a perfect kind of example of how complacency can creep into a team that maybe has high expectations. Then you lose a game one week and you know, you can't ever really recover from it. And those goals that you once had just because you came out complacent once week, one week are no longer there because you lose to a UVA at home. So talk to me about the, the poisonous cheese story. Cause it's a, it's a pretty interesting one. Kind of a funny one too. Well, you and I often talk about, now, I said it the other night in the, the three things video that you could take the 11, the, the, the best defensive player at each position, all 11 spots, put them on the same team. And if they don't prepare well and they're not in a good scheme and they don't have the right disposition, they're not going to be very good. Yeah. Football is about so much more than that. So I think what the cheese does, it represents the psychological aspect of the sport where Everything begins at at the top, you know, from the head coach on down, but also within each player, they have to be in the right frame of mind. They have to have the right level of focus. And part of that is respecting the opponent and also respecting themselves. We hear a lot about respecting opponent, but you got to respect yourself and go out and show out and be who you are. And that's 
all plays into the standard that they keep pushing to this group that they they've elevated the standard as the season's gone on because they can achieve more. So this is sort of a metaphor about the psychology of athletics, the psychology of human nature, and certainly the psychology of football. It's the gladiator sport where you think, well, gladiators just have uh, like Godzilla just has to take walk into Tokyo and he's just going to smack everything around. Right. Yeah. But if Godzilla walks into Tokyo and he's like, eh, it's not really going to smack that much stuff around. He's not going to yeah. do the same damage he would if he's going in there and hell bent and just crushing everything. Right. Maybe that's not a good example, but I hope I'm getting the point across. No, that's what this are. is for. Mm-hmm. You can't get complacent. You can't get comfortable biting the cheese is a metaphor for listening too much to what the nationals are saying, right? It's it's watching podcasts and seeing what guys that are around the team praising them for who they are. I know that, uh, for example, I did that Cedric Love or Cedric Gray Love podcast. He didn't know I did that because he's not sitting there. Hey, I wonder what these guys are saying about me. That's being in the right frame of mind. The right frame of mind for a game on Saturday begins long before Saturday. That's what this is about. They have to respect UVA and they have to take care of business because they're playing a team that's coming off a win and an open date. So by the time UVA takes the field Saturday, it will have been three weeks since they tasted defeat. They're going to be as confident as they have been all year. Yeah. And they're playing a rival and they're playing a team that they've had success against in the past. Some of those guys, I'm sure, were there a couple of years ago when Carolina blew that fourth and two defensively when they had the fake and or they just ran the play and they got the first down. They beat them 43, 41 in Charlottesville during the COVID year, I guess it was. Mm-hmm. So um, that's what this is. I think it's, I think it's cool. We'll see if it works or not. Yeah. Bryson Nesbitt, we had him today on zoom after practice and he said, yeah, they got the guys get it. We understand the story. And Mac told them the Bill Parcells story, which I guess you asked me to, to tell very quickly. I will. So Carolina or Carolina, Texas in 2005, late in the season, coming off a 66 to 14 win over Kansas and Kansas back then wasn't bad. That was a Mark Mangino, Kansas team. Yeah, pretty yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. So they waxed them. They're undefeated. They're 10 and 0. They're ranked number two in the country. And they got Texas A&M that week and A&M on the road. And A&M was four and seven at the time. So Bill Parcells, who was then the head coach of the Cowboys, he won a bunch of Super Bowls with the Giants. He calls up Mac and says, you're in trouble this week. Mac says, come on, we just beat Kansas 66 to 14. Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said, you're in trouble, boy. You got to go to basically you're going down there. This is their Super Bowl. This is their bowl game. And they're talented guys, and it's going to be a hornet's nest, and you got to be ready to play them. And he he said, don't don't let your team eat the poisonous cheese. Don't don't be the rat eating the poisonous cheese. So Mac, it was sometime in the afternoon. He says, and this has been corroborated. Jeremy Sharp was there working with Mac then twice. He said, yeah, he went down and put cheese in each locker, and then he put Bill Parcells quote up on the on the wall in the locker room. The next week they roll into College Station and they're down twenty nine to twenty four or something at halftime. They end up winning forty to twenty nine. And Max said he told the team afterward, "You're not going to die." He told him halftime, "You're not going to die, but you're going to be sick as hell because you ate too much of that cheese." Yeah. So this week the players go in Wednesday morning. They practice at eight o'clock in the morning. The players are in their locker in the locker room by six thirty, six forty five, seven o'clock. They all walk in there and hanging on a fishing line in each locker is a little piece of cheese. And Bryson said it was cheddar. I asked him what, what flavor it was. That's important. Part of the, that's of journalism course. right there. A lot of that's different cheeses out there. A lot right of different there. cheeses out there, isn't it? And, and I, I think that they understand what, what's going on here. And you need that because this is an easy week where they can just lay an egg. And this program has a history of laying that egg when they reach these points. Mm-hmm. So... Mac is playing some psychological games with him because he knows he needs to, and they need to work through these next few weeks. And by the time they come out on the other side for the last three games, they should have absolutely no problem getting up for Duke, Clemson, and NC State. But it's these next three games, I think they're going to be a psychological challenge for this group. And, and next week, especially when they go to Atlanta. 
Yeah. That's a dangerous game. It's a bogey team. So, it's a bogey team. So that's 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 the very long version of the cheese story. Yeah, go read the store the article AJ put out on tarillustrate.com as well. You'll find it should be still pretty towards the top and it, it gives a little more context and kind of explains it a little bit more. And I'm going to write another one. I'm going to write yeah. a follow up to that. I might as well. I mean, I, sometimes I'm not the low hanging fruit guy, but I, I don't. I, this is low hanging fruit, but I totally get what the point is, and I think the point's important for people to understand because too many people look at football and say, "Well, look at all that talent. How could they lose?" Because it's, it's about so much more than it's just human health. nature, man. We talk about it all the time, and people probably it's get sick about of preparation, it yeah. scheme, human nature, disposition, focus. It's about all those things. It's not just being super talented, mm-hmm. and that's why the guy who's a Hall of Famer, the guy who's a legend, is putting cheddar cheese in everybody's locker today because he knows through his experiences it's about a lot more than just jimmy's and joe's oh, of course jimmy's and joe's have to be steered in the right direction and they got to have their heads cleared and ready to go then yeah. the jimmy's and joe's can take over yeah it, last thing i'll say on the cheese i don't maybe somebody asked this but i i left that from reading that article and listening to the press conference i, I left with more questions than answers because what i wanted to know was a did mac was mac at walmart or harris teeter buying 50 packs of cheese and, and, and probably Walmart because he had to get fishing. He had to get fishing line too. I'm assuming I mean, if it was hanging from a fishing line thread. So, did he do that? What intern had to go do that and buy a cart full of cheese in in fishing line? I I think that would have been hilarious just to see somebody in the store, well, like you know Matt calling up an intern or somebody on the staff, like, hey man, weird request. Need you to go down to Harris Teeter, Walmart, Food Line, wherever. Get me fifty packs of cheddar cheese. Probably more than that. In some that's, fishing line and being like, no, that's some hard hitting journalism. That that's I, need. I, need, I think I need if you to, guys to, talk to, to Mac later that. this week or have an opportunity, to, I need, well, I'm I need sure, to I'm that. sure maybe Sally went out and got it or somebody. That's did. a good way. Yeah, fishing, the fishing out. line, you know what offensive linemen are all about. One of those offensive linemen's probably got to have like a real a fishing line. Oh God, at least at home, handful right? of them, handful. Yeah, of them I, I can. I could see a Corey Gaynor doing some of that, having some of that stuff. A hundred percent. Now it also reminds me of Roy. Roy would go out and get it himself. Yeah, you see Roy and Harris Teeter buying milk after a game at midnight. Roy Roy was a regular at Harris Teeter. So is Hubert, by the way. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Max's a regular regular guy. He He is, yeah. The more you get to know him, the more you One of the things that that I've really uh, appreciated about getting to know Mac over the last five years is that I actually can see him walking into a Costco and buying a massive thing of cheese like this. Now, he may not cut it up. Mm -hmm. He may not cut it up. Mm -hmm. But I can see him just on a whim saying, uh, I can't, Adam Smith can do the the Mac impersonation, but I'm going to go get some cheese like (laughs) Sunday morning. And he goes and gets this massive block of cheese. Yeah, And he pulls up to the Keenan Football Center and lugging a bunch of cheese. That's awesome. No, just a fascinating story. I need clarification on that, AJ. If you get a chance to ask Matt, I will I just, get it. I'm curious. Jeremy Sharp, I if Jeremy, if Jeremy Sharp is is paying attention to this drop, this drop, it's a podcast. It's not a drop. <laughs> uh, if he's paying attention to this, we need to find out how they. I need cheese. to know who got it. I need to know what is the man. path. We need receipts. We yeah. need receipts. I need to know how much it cost as well because it had to be an expensive. That's did a he lot send of cheese, Alex? Man. Did he send Alex White out to get it? Yeah, that's true. Was it? That's what I'm saying. It was it someone like her? Is it an intern on the staff? Is it someone in the media? Heck, was it Jeremy Sharp? Was Jeremy in the store at Costco or BJ's buying hundred fifty dollars worth of cheese? You know what I mean? That's a lot of cheese, age. A lot of players on that football team. A lot of lockers in that. Can locker. you imagine being in line behind someone who's got just like a massive keg of cheese? <laughs> and wondering what's and, that guy doing and they don't even know and if it's jeremy you know he's wearing shorts and a carolina shirt 100 percent. you know he's and they have carolina no now. idea that he's a big timer he's mm-hmm. a big wig mm-hmm. and that he's taking that cheese so mac could cut it up and put it inside bryson nesbitt's locker it's fantastic and i want to know after the game maybe you guys can ask if carolina wins against virginia do they eat the cheese or is well, the cheese maybe not edible at that point? I don't know enough. I mean, I would assume you could still eat it, right? The poisonous part of the story is part of the fable, right? Mm-hmm. But if that cheese is hanging in there for four days and I don't at eat 10 o'clock cheese, at night after they after Mac dances and they beat 
Virginia, if they start eating the cheese, then they're really going to have a problem on their hands after. That's true. Your whole team's going to be sick going into Georgia Tech, which they do not need. Because I'll tell no, you that. There will be no practice Monday. No. Yeah. And then, then we'll have a whole new story to write about. Maybe, maybe they'll burn the after, cheese or something. The after effects of eating spoiled cheese. Yeah, maybe they'll just throw it in the trash or burn it in the bonfire. Who knows? But we'll get more clarification on that. Carolina still needs to win the I game. I want a photo. I want a player yeah. to take a photo of the cheese hanging on a fishing line in a locker and tweet it out. And we'll go I crazy need it. And it. I know. I do believe if Carolina wins against Virginia, I, I guarantee Carolina's social media team will have – will have their, you know, victory vibes video that they put out after the game. They'll have some kind of cheese element in there. I'm sure we'll maybe get to see a shot of that cheese. And if 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 not, there's an idea for the creative team right there. And you guys can think. I, I think that. I think Miss King was, hope, was figuring that there would be more fitting if they were playing Wisconsin this week. That would be really good. And I think she even said on Twitter, will we see maybe a couple of them Green Bay Packers cheese head maybe in the stands maybe someone orders that on amazon today after this podcast like but aren't those cheese heads aren't those well maybe they are cheddar i always thought they were like swiss or something yeah i I think they are more cheddar they're more of an orangey tint yellowy tint to them you know what i mean so i is it i don't know enough i don't i'm not a cheese expert necessarily to know i'm sure there's a lot of different cheeses out there that could be that color but you could pass as cheddar for sure why cheddar why not colby Colby that's a good question i think you know, cheddar is more of your basic cheese. You're it's not a good thing it wasn't Munster. A, it's a good a, thing yeah. it wasn't Munster. That would or be a problematic. Or Jack or something like that. That's that's a little bit too expensive to get at the store, too. I think you get cheddar, you can probably get a little bit cheaper. So that maybe that played a factor. But you know Munster yeah. cheese, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be problematic. Yeah, oh, God, yeah, it would be. Or that or there's so many different cheeses they could Guys would be getting work. dressed before the game in the tunnel. Yeah. Not in the locker room. <laughs> yeah, like, we're not. We're not doing that, man. But just a, a fascinating story, an interesting one. We'll see if it works, too, this weekend against yeah. Carolinas. They'll definitely need to be ready to play against UVA. We're going to dive into the preview here in a second. But before we do, a special thank you to our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. And Tar Heel Illustrated is presented by Underdog Fantasy. And we see a lot of our fans, which is great. People who watch this show are downloading Underdog. We've, we've heard back from a little bit, which is sweet. And they're using that promo code HEAL and having fun, which we love to see as well. So hopefully we'll get some more signups going into the rest of the year as well. And if you haven't already checked Underdog Fantasy out, be sure to do so. It's super easy to use. You just go on the app and go pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total than what is listed. That That is one of the, the pick them game that they offer that is such a, a big, big attraction why so many people are, are going with Underdog Fantasy. And just to give you guys an example, um, we'll use Travis, Travis Kelsey because he's obviously top of mind right now with everything going on around him right now. But it, let's say his numbers set at 50 yards for, for the weekend. He'll have 50 yards. And you know Taylor Swift's in the house, so maybe you're feeling like confident he's going to go a little bit higher because he's got his girlfriend, celebrity girl, watching him from the stands. You know what I mean? That's the example I can give you of how this works. You can pick maybe he'll go less than 50 or he goes higher than 50. You do that with two to five different players. And you're in business. And if you go five for five, you can even 20x your money. So, guys, get on it. Sign up today with the homo, uh, promo code HEEL, H E E L. Get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Visit underdogfantasy.com or check them out in the app store. Register with that promo code again to get that uh, deposit doubled up to $100. A lot of fantasy companies out there, AJ, but we decided to partner with Underdog because it's the easiest place to play fantasy sports. Also, the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry, which I can vouch for because they're absolutely everywhere all over social media. I'm seeing them pop up all over the place. May be 18 plus and present in the state. One of our fantasy operates terms apply concerned with your play. Call 1-800-522-4700. Visit NCP gambling dot org big thank you to underdog fantasy because i never thought me and aj would sit here talking about travis kelsey on taylor swift on a unc football show but that's exactly and cheese that. and cheese too this is a we, we gone off the rails on this show AJ. This yeah, we're going further off the rails here in a second finish, finish the read and i'm, I'm going to take us completely off the rails go ahead because that read is over thank you underdog fantasy right. link in the description thank you underdog fantasy and i was actually petting my dog when you were reading underdog oh your dog is in the room yeah. nice man yeah. Nice. yeah i've got both and they're both quiet so far i'm about to say the fact that it doesn't sound like your home's getting invaded is pretty impressive we're, we're not pulling in 1939 with germany yeah, just Creek. yet now <laughs> if amazon pulls up we're in trouble yeah it's over all right so how about so the travis kelsey taylor swift thing what current tar heel football player is most likely to have a celebrity romance when they get to the league later on? Ooh, that's a great question, man. I think the easiest one would be a Drake May. 
you know, because he's the guy that everybody's talking about and he's the big shot going into the NFL draft next year. But let's hear from the people. I want to hear that's the I don't, I don't see Drake rolling like that though. Drake I don't is either. such an aw, he he is genuinely an all shucks guy. Yeah, he's you know, very last very week low-key. after the Syracuse game, he said golly. Yeah. Like golly twice yeah. in the post game press conference. And then when it was all done, I went up to Cedric Gray and I said, Cedric, I gotta ask you, man. So Drake said golly twice does. Does he talk like that with you guys too? And he's yeah, come to think of it, I think I've heard him say golly before. I think he's too off shucks. To yeah, have I take a, that back. It ain't gonna be Drake May. He ain't walking around with Taylor Swift anytime soon. I can't never see that happening. It's a good question. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Who would it be? I don't know if they really have one. You know, Cedric well, Gray, I think, do I see Cedric Gray walking around with a celebrity? Not really. Mm, the don't. No. Seems like I he's don't. I think he's too much of a football guy. Well, to, to I date think a he's celebrity. Could, I think he could attract one because oh, he yeah, checks all the boxes. Mm-hmm. God, we are really going off the rails here. Um I need to let hear me, from let the me people. think. I'm I think Kobe Pesor has the personality. Yeah, he's got the swagger Something about like him, personality. I think yeah. Bryson Nesbitt does. Bryson Nesbitt for sure. Nesbitt, yeah, yeah, hundred he's, percent. He's got he's he's got that vibe. He's got the total package for sure. I think yeah, he'll be a guy we'll be seeing um, late on Sundays for sure at some point. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, well, let's think about this a little bit more. Yeah, we want to hear from you guys too. That that we'll, yeah, tell, we, okay, that's great, great idea. Mm-hmm. Twitter, get involved. A lot of people have reached out when we post questions to a big thank you to the the oh, watch yeah, the listeners time. that do that. We appreciate it. We'll, I'll get a random tweet in my well, mentions and I'll be like, "What is this guy talking about?" Well, well, do yeah, do it, watch. do it on Twitter. Don't just send us the DMs. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it on Twitter. Just at Heel Illustrated yeah, at Jacob Twitter. Turner, it, get some dialogue fun. going. Who is the Tar Heel most likely to have a celebrity romance when they get to the league? I like that, man. Or, may, a, or maybe there's a Tar Heel that won't get to the league. There'll be a Dan Cortez type who yeah. ends up on Seinfeld. Yeah, maybe a um, J.J. Jones. He wants to be on TV one day, and he could see him in the league as well, but maybe, you know, with the TV later on in his what career. What was the line? Step off, George. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we want to hear from Tony. you guys. Get involved on Twitter, guys. We, we want to hear from you, and this is the hard-hitting questions that you get here on uh the unc football show so let us know what you guys think in this show too by yeah the way. yeah maybe it's, I mean, yeah, a lot enough. of people who that's love enough it. love it yeah we'll, we'll leave off the seinfeld but i'm sure a lot of some of it's it some of it's dated now i think yeah you know seinfeld was, was 2023 that was a it wasn't it's not recent history we'll put it that way it goes back a little bit seinfeld you know but what i mean carries it. seinfeld has good shelf life yeah. Oh, of course. Of course it does, man. There's a lot of people that I'm sure who enjoy the Seinfeld references because, you know, it is a legendary show to, to say the least. But AJ, let's dive into UVA a little bit. And I, I kind of took the approach that maybe the Tar Heels are taking a little bit this week is a lot of times we'll come on these shows and I'll have a ton of stats about this. And this is the guy you got to watch out for. And this is this is who you got to really stop. And obviously Carolina's taking those boxes. They always do. They diligently prepare for every team they play. But I'm focusing on the preview portion of this show of what does Carolina need to do? This week is about Carolina going up against a team like UVA who is really struggling this year. But like you said, coming off a bye week, coming off a win as well before the bye week, they'll they'll be as confident as they've been going into this game. We'll be looking to play spoilers against the Tar Heels this weekend. So UVA 1-5 right now, 0-2 in ACC play, lone win of the season coming over William and Mary. So they have really, really struggled through their opening six games um number seven in total offense averaging about 348.8 yards per game number 70 in total defense just above that at 379 so about 380 yards per game so not exceptional in those two categories i know you got some other stats you'll throw at us aj that goes a little bit more in depth on that but focusing on uva and what they've done this year and four losses against the power five teams that they played average margin of that loss has been about 18 points 17 and a half points so kind of opposite to what we've seen about Carolina. We've talked about a lot this year, how Carolina's average margin of victory. I don't have the total in front of me right now against P five teams has been up in that kind of 16, 17, 18 point range with how they've been able to, to win some of these games. So you're talking about opposites right there in terms of results and and performances against P five teams. And I think the caveat to that though, AJ is in the two ACC losses that they've had, they have played and they have, you know, they've, they've lost, They've been competitive. They've only they've lost to NC State and Boston College, who I know were both teams that have struggled this year mightily. So it's not the greatest sample size to look at, but they've lost those games each by just three points. So just six combined points. They've lost those two games. So it's not like this is a UVA team that's just getting blown out. And they have been 
blown out this year against Tennessee, against Maryland. They have had some really, really bad losses early in the year. But when it comes to the ACC play, they have been competitive. And, and again, this is a team you cannot overlook, especially coming off a of bye week and, and with the preparation they'll, they'll have against Carolina, who's coming off an emotional Saturday night win at home against a, a team in Miami who is top 25 team. And they're getting a lot of love right now. So again, preparation's absolutely massive for North Carolina. I guess the big, the only thing I'll say about individuals, AJ quarterback, Tony Musket, Monmouth transfer is listed as the number one guy on the depth chart. Did have some pretty solid performances against BC and William and Mary, but was not the starter to begin the year. He's kind of slid in to that role right now. An experienced guy played a lot of football at Monmouth and again had some some pretty decent stat lines against Boston College and William and Mary when he when he did get a lot of snaps. So is a little banged up from what I've seen. That bye week will help, but he's been a guy that's been dealing with some injuries. So it'll be interesting to see how he performs and how Carolina prepares for him because they won't have as much tape on him as they maybe would if you know UVA had gone with the same guy all year. But again, it's all about Carolina this week. So AJ, let's talk about UVA a little bit and, and what challenges, if any, do you think that the, the the UVA presents because again for me this week is more about how does Carolina prepare how does Carolina look in warmups on Saturday are they focused are they kind of lackadaisical yeah. what does Mac talk about in his press conference after the game on Saturday or maybe even on Thursday when he likes to talk to the media does he come out and say yeah we've had some bad practices this week that's a big red flag for this team or does he come out and say we've had some of the best practices we've had all year this week and then you can feel a little bit more confident going into it so when you look at UVA what are your thoughts on the Cavaliers and, and kind of what challenges they may present to the Tar Heels well we're doing this Monday or excuse me Wednesday after practice and by all accounts the practices this week have been good mm -hmm. UVA's got tough quarterback situation Musket played at Monmouth so he had FCS experience but he's really struggled at times at UVA then they have a true freshman who also plays. I think if you're North Carolina, got to get after them, got to get some pressure. They might be able to get the conventional pressure, the three-man rush. Mm -hmm. They did that a lot last week, and they were, mm -hmm. especially in the second half, they were able to drop eight, drop the linebackers already, drop them, especially on some third and longs, second and longs, third and longs. They couldn't do that a year ago. So they're yeah. getting the stuff up front that they need. Uh, the offensive line's an issue at UVA. It was terrible last year. I don't think it's a whole lot better this year. So the UVA's weaknesses play into some of Carolina's defensive strengths, UVA's offensive weaknesses, that is. But I really believe this is a game about UNC. This is a game to test the standard. Who are you? What are you? Are you a club that is satisfied? You get a little complacent thinking, well, we could just roll in and beat these guys? Because the first six games, they haven't approached it that way. They, they weren't, you know, popping off on all cylinders against App State. And that's the human nature game. That's their mulligan game. They can't have another mulligan game because you really don't get two. You get one. And if you have a second one and then a third one, then you start to wonder, well, who are these guys really? Yeah. I think they're the guy. I think they're a team that's been doing this for a while and they're still doing it, the trajectory. But this will be a test on that trajectory. If they come out and just blow the doors off UVA, that's a great sign. It's a sign that they respected the opponent. It's a sign that they respected themselves. It's a sign that they had the right frame of mind and all that connected with their physical gifts. And they were able to take control of the game and pull away. That's what should happen in this game. No disrespect to UVA, which that margin, as you noted, is not really accurate because Tennessee was a huge part of that margin. Yeah, Maryland too blew the doors and, off them for the most part. Mm -hmm. But in Carolina's case, they've been consistently very good against the P5s. They're the only team in college football that has five wins over P5 teams with each of them being 10 points or more. Yeah, it's an impressive stat. Yeah, it really is. Good. Now, they haven't played the best group of P5s. Mm -hmm. As it's turned out, some of the teams we thought would be better have not been very yeah. good. South Carolina being one, and now their coach has a broken foot. So that's a the, the media in the I didn't hear uh, about that. <laughs> the media in the Palmetto States having a field day. They've been all Shane over Beamer. Shane Beamer. I didn't realize he broke. Yeah, his foot he was a toast of the town six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. Now he's now he's a Lefty Giselle meme. Should yeah. be because Lefty Giselle at Maryland stomped his foot through a chair and broke his foot one time. <laughs> I can coach. 
Anyway, that's, um, that's a great story. Right the, there. the old timers will know what I just did right there. <laughs> so this is going to be a test on Carolina standard. If this, if they meet the standard, they won't have any problems because mm-hmm. I don't really think there's anything UVA does that well. They're, they, they're throwing for a decent number of yards, but they're also playing from behind a lot. And it doesn't factor in the efficiency completing 61% of their passes with, with, at least eight interceptions, more and more than that. I, I have to go back and look because I know that I think it is maybe eight interceptions. So they're not, there's not a lot of uh, plus side on their offense. Defense a little bit better. Their pass yeah. efficiency numbers aren't bad. They're, they're, they're upper half of the nation. And, you know, if you're UVA, then that's great. You got to point to something. I, I don't think the Wahoos are very good. I, I wasn't so sure they would beat William and Mary. They were down 13, yeah. 13 3 yeah. in the second quarter. Close game, yeah. Yeah. So, um, again, this this is North Carolina's game to win or to lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the focus, and that's the message if you take anything away from this week. And you're hearing it from the Kenyon Football Center as well. It's not just us making this up. And we, I think we talked about it during three things last week too, of like this, this coming week is about the standard. It's about human nature. It's about can Carolina prepare well this week and not let that complacency, not eat the poisonous cheese that, that Max talking about. That's the next step for this team and the next step for this program. And we'll see what they're able to do this weekend. So it's, it's a big, the, the poisonous I know it's not a big game on paper, but it's, it's a, it's big, it's a big game and a big, um, it could be a really big weekend for the Tar Heels if they come out and, and win 48-24, which is my prediction for this game, by the way. When you're playing for a potential spot in the CFP, every game's huge. Yeah, you can't go win. So this is a huge game. But also, remember with the cheese metaphor, and we'll be our last mention about cheese, and I give my dogs cheese every night to get them up, to lure them upstairs to, mm-hmm. uh, to, for bed. So when I do cheese tonight with them, it'll I'll, I'll think about I'll think about Mac hanging cheese on a fishing line in each locker, <laughs> but uh, the the cheese metaphor wouldn't have worked last week. It would have been necessary. It's necessary now. So that tells you that the guy who knows how to lead teams at this point of a season with what they're playing for knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. So I suspect I suspect it will work. It has worked and will continue to work because they're leaving the cheese up there all week. Yeah, it should, man. They definitely should. He ought, he, like and it. he'll tell him, he ought to tell him, look, if you don't play B plus football, I'm keeping the cheese there. Yeah, you can keep the cheese till you play get till you perform well again. I like that. No I matter what it, it looks and smells like. Yeah, man. That's what that's what it takes. I AJ, I said 48 24, my staff picks. I'm pretty sure that's what I sent in. Um I think so. I think it was 48 24 so that, that's what i'm thinking I, I think it's i think carolina ends up winning relatively comfortably i think uva maybe scores a few late points a couple late touchdowns maybe maybe carolina gets some of the reserves in later on in the game maybe up you know 41 to 17 is something it's 41 10 at some point that's how i see this game shaking out and and we'll see what happens this weekend but what do you think i think the heels open up strong Score, 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 then hit a little cruise control the rest of the way. Maybe similar to the Syracuse game in some ways, kind of similar game plan. Defense plays really well, doesn't let UVA do much in the offense. Just I think a lot of reserves are going to play. They need to play reserve offensive linemen. Like, they need to get Trevion. Trevion Green played one snap last week. He played the Omari and Hampton touchdown run. Yeah. Need to get they, they, like had a ju- they had a jumbo package in there for that. So they need to get him out there. Mac told us last week, look, if Travion got Diego pound snaps, because they stuck Diego out there mm-hmm. and he's played well enough that he stayed out there. Look now. It. He Max says that Travion would play as well as Diego. Mm. So get him out there and let him play. Yes, so absolutely. I, I think now that's not their mission. That's not what they're thinking going in. But if they look up and it's 35 to seven in the fourth, in the third quarter, they got to get those guys in there. They need to play. They need to play Zach Rice and Trevion Green on the offensive line. RJ Grigsby has been back practicing for, mm-hmm. he started practicing again last week. If he's ready enough to go get him some snaps, because they thought that he would have a chance of being in the rotation this year on the offensive line. And if Travis can go give him extended snaps, he needs extended snaps. This might be a game where Bo Atkinson gets 25 or 30 snaps if possible because he's been in this – he's averaged 15 and a half a game. He's played really well. He's yeah. grading out just under 80. And we had Bo 
Tuesday when we did the player interviews. And this will be an opportunity for him to pick up the snap count this week if they get off to a good start and put UVA, basically bury UVA in a corner, and then they could cruise the rest of the way. That would be ideal. First got to win the game, and you do that with the starters. Then you could worry about who you stick in there. But that would be the best way for this game to go that they get it, they take care of things early enough that they can get in some reserves. So they can work them in through the game and certainly to close the game. No, that would be big time. Obviously giving those starters a rest too is obviously big going into the rest of the year too. Cause it is like you said, a lot of banged up guys this part of the year through six games. If you can get some of those starters a rest, particularly your Cedric Gray's, your power Eccles who play 5,000 snaps every game. If you can give them a, you know, a quarter off, that'd be fantastic for them as well. I'm sure they wouldn't be a, against that although i will say if there's two guys that would probably would probably would it love to play every snap or would probably be more mad that they're not playing every snap it'd probably be those two guys because you talk about just football junkies right there they, they probably you'd have, have to football. you'd have to put landmines all over the field to keep cedric from going on the field. and i think he pretty much said that last week in his interview after he got banged up against miami up, yeah. i think he went up drake or somebody came up to him or maybe he went up to drake and was like you're gonna have to kill me to get me off this field because Drake got lit up a couple of times last week is too. I love that mindset for those guys, which is the yeah, perfect, but, but, perfect but, leaders. You know what I mean? But if they could get a Murray Campbell, a bunch of snaps and get Sebastian cheeks out there, that's yeah. huge. See, Campbell, he's looked good when he's played. He has. He yeah. actually, the one in, in Syracuse game, there was one snap that I thought there was some pre-snap confusion on defense. And that was Campbell. I think he lined up a little too wide on the right side mm-hmm. and ended up making the play on the left side. Mm-hmm. Mid tackle, yeah. it's like he's good. Well, man. That was impressive. So yeah. get them some snaps. Then get 15, 20 snaps. That would be huge. It will be, and we'll see what happens this week. We want to know hear from you guys. We'll see your score predictions. Let us know. You can get involved if you're a premium subscriber on our message board. Just get involved in the staff picks thread when that comes out, or just reach out to us again on Twitter. Let us know, celebrity, who, who, which one of these current Carolina players you can most likely see dating a celebrity in the future. I know it's the most random question you've ever heard on the UNC football show, but that's what we're here for. That's the that's the type of stuff we we like to bring to you guys. So let us know on Twitter. We're interested to hear what you say. If if we did a, that question for the THI staff, without a doubt, hands down, it's Kevin Roy. Oh, of course. Of course, man. It's not it's it's not even close. And he will hear this, AJ, because as Kevin tells me, he listens to everything. I think he thinks you don't. I think he thinks that you he doesn't hear a lot of this stuff. But according to Kevin Roy, he hears all this stuff. And I think he uh, I think he, he likes it a little bit, too. Not so. only would he be the guy, but then the entire world would know it. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. would have he would have social media posts about every moment. We held hands today before dinner, and there's a <laughs> picture of them holding hands, just the holding hands. Oh, man, we're going to know if Kevin watches this because he's going to be sending you a test message real quick. Um, I'm sure I'll be at that gonna be, He's going to be pissed. <laughs> he's, he's keep his keep his wife. He's married, so. Yeah, shout out to Kevin Roy. He'd have, he'd have to end his marriage to become a uh, available <laughs> on the celebrity dating circuit. Yeah, shout out Kevin Roy, man, our photographer, doing a fantastic job this year. Big, big, big love to Kevin. And uh, if, if you're at the game and you see a photographer on the sideline wearing with a Tar Heel Illustrated visor and that's shirt, Kevin mm-hmm. that's Kevin Roy. Give him all kinds of hell. Yeah, man, he'll he'll absolutely love that. We'll see if he hears tell, this. Tell him, tell him his photos suck. <laughs> yeah, see what kind of response you get from that. Follow him on Twitter too, man. I can't remember his handle, but it just search Kevin Roy. You'll find him. Give him a little, give him a little love on Twitter. It's Kevin underscore THI, I think. Something like that. If you search oh, Kevin on, Roy, on, you'll see on. it. I know. Yeah, it. pull it up real quick. Pull it up. Let's give Kevin some love. I know he said he's trying to get his Twitter followers up. We can we can give him a little push right now. All right. Uh, I think hold on. Dan. You know, I'm typing on my phone. So Let's see if I can beat you to it. Th- there's a long running joke about it's uh, at Kevin Roy 95. Is that what it says? Yes. Hold on one second. At, yep. Cat Kevin, Kevin Roy 95. At Kevin Roy 95. Right. People, a lot of people know that they're going to get an AJ typo every game and every once in a while during the week. It's because I type on my phone and I have fat thumbs. And, and he's I'm a typing. Thumb typer. And he's doing 17 different things at one time, too. And, and if I'm not wearing these, I have no earthly idea what I'm hitting. Yeah, man. I we all make mistakes. Hit send, baby. Hit send and gibberish goes out. We need to get like a review on you after every game. If somebody looks at all your tweets from the game and like grades you out like PFF and see how you perform that during the game, see, give you some kind of grade, see how many typos you had, all that kind well, of jazz. You know how when I do the inside offense, inside defense reports, I only include 
the grades of the players that play 10 or more snaps are 60.0 or above with their grade. Mm-hmm. If somebody did that to our stuff because of my type, like our social media stuff, I would never be listed. Yeah, you'd be below 60, 60 every time. Zero. Easily, easily. If anybody has some downtime, you know. You know Chaz to, Surratt had a grade one down. time at linebacker of 28.6. <laughs> so I'd be in the Chaz Surratt neighborhood. It's pretty amazing. He's in the NFL, guys. That's well, The game before that, he's like at 71. The game after, he's like at 78. So. Yeah, it's, that's a wild 28. You got to love a, that. A couple of breakdowns, and the guys in the PFF room, the nerds that are doing that at 4 o'clock in the morning, are like, oh, let's penalize them. <laughs> you gotta love it you gotta love it man we'll get let's get on out of here aj we've derailed this podcast like seven times already we got to get out of here we got more work to do as well my so it's dog, the never stop, so i have both dogs right here behind i like me. it i often have, have my cat a couple of my cats in the background it? i gotta lock them out yeah oh, i see them i see them walking around this is this is izzy she's crazy she destroys stuff every time i leave the house you're lucky she's not in there destroying your and room right now. I'm impressed. Max is the one. Max is right there. He's the one that when we had some workers outside, he went through my office window. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great story. That's, that's amazing. Both panes of glass. <laughs> and that's why AJ talks about when, when Amazon rolls up, it's like the D-Day invasion. I mean, well, the, the, I don't know if you hear them, but the guys are out there right now. And, and But I have the shades down on purpose. And is he scared? That's why she's here. She's terrified uh, of her shadow. Sense. Max was we turn a ceiling fan on. She looks up at the ceiling fan like it's going to come attack her. <laughs> so she's nervous. Max is ready for war at all times. That's Max is saying. looking for a fight, man. <laughs> I love it, man. I love sweet it. as he- sweet as hell inside the house. I go outside, take him on a walk. There's a four year old on a scooter and he wants to charge after. Her. Hey, so people know who don't mess with AJ's house, man, because they you will not make it. Yeah, we just got a door. new. I came back from getting my steps the other day and there's these guys at the front door and my wife's giving them all my information to buy a new security system. Thanks. She didn't run it by me. <laughs> and um, we were telling them that story. And I'm thinking, we don't really need security. You got if, anybody's, dogs, man. if anybody's casing the joint and they, they know Max, they, I take them outside when the kids are out there and he's charging after four-year-olds. Mm-hmm. Burger's not going to want to come in here. <sighs> not, he doesn't stand a chance, man. He wouldn't get past the front door, to be honest with you. That's, that's a little piece of mind. You don't need a security. You don't need ADT when you got Max walking around that not house. Not to mention that. the fact there's nothing in here to steal. Pro and old press passes back there. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to no, say, you're not getting a lot, man. You're only stealing some press passes at an ACC championship uh, thing. Maybe an Orioles hat. If maybe well, an Orioles fan breaks in. I've got some cool stuff up there. You do. You got some stuff over there. I'm sure there's a lot of people. Hey, who hold on, I'm turning around, and down. there's that Final Four thing I took from the locker room last year. Oh, I love it. I've actually yeah. never got a tour of the office. This is exclusive for me. I like it, man. It's a nice little setup you got in there. Well, you got right up there. You got Cal Ripken and Eddie Murray. You got well, of course you you know, Cal Ripken up there. I like it, man. You got a nice little office setup. I've always wondered what it looked Eddie like. I've like. only seen one angle on these pods. So always Eddie wondered Murray what stuff. I like it, there. man. I like that it. one, let's see. It's that one right there, the lower Eddie Murray one. That's stamped, dated from uh, when he was inducted in the Hall of Fame. And for those who don't the, the, know. The post office in Cooperstown opens Sunday, the day of in, the induction day every year, so they can date stamp uh, that stuff, which is I pretty cool. So. For those who don't know, Eddie Murphy is, is AJ's guy. No, no not way. Murphy. Lord have mercy. Yeah, that's his man. Do you, do you want your paycheck this month? What did I say? Did I say it wrong? You said oh, Eddie, Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Excuse me, Eddie Murray. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. <sighs> That was an easy one. I, you can deduct that off my off my pay, AJ. Just go ahead and deduct Jake, that. Jacob gets a demerit. Yeah. I might get fired. You guys might not see me on Saturday, to be honest. It might be my last podcast. So appreciate yeah, everybody watching really- and follow us it along because you may never see me on this on this uh, platform again. <laughs> I was going to show you my Iowa credential from basketball a couple years ago when they they didn't have one for me, so they gave me one in somebody else's media thing. I've, I've had that happen station. in Carolina a couple of times. I will say some I, radio station from Des Moines didn't show up. So they gave me that guy's credential because they oh, forgot to do it. I've had to get some handwritten credentials because that there's yeah. a couple of times where I, people, if, for whatever reason in Carolina, the last couple of years, they finally got it figured out, but I was credentialed for games, but never had a pass. So I used to have to get a lot of handwritten. Hey, passes I'm going to make a picture. I've got Listerine strips. <laughs> They don't chew gum anymore. So if Listerine strips, they want to sponsor this podcast. Oh, I take absolutely. That. Give us a call. We'll do it. 
I'd say I'm a big mouthwash guy. If we can get Listerine involved on this, man, I'd Brett absolutely Friedlander love that. Would be, this is like two or AJ's office day. Brett Friedlander would be proud of my father. Oh, man, energy. shout out Brett Friedlander. He's got And it's empty, which is why I'm so so, so on fire in this, in this he's, podcast. He's good, man. AJ's a couple a couple five-hour energies in deep, man. That Those things are getting drank like no, nobody's business this time of year. Is The grind is officially on, and it's only going to get worse when basketball starts. So make sure you keep it locked to Tar Heel Illustrated dot com for all your coverage of carolina football basketball and recruiting big thank you to underdog fantasy and guys let us know again get involved on twitter want to hear from y'all get your score predictions in and uh we'll see how the tar heels do this weekend i've been jacob turner he's been andrew jones another episode of the unc football show appreciate y'all watching if you think carolina's gonna win like that video below let's see how many likes we can get i want over 100 i uh, over 100 is, is the minimum i want on all these especially when i ask you about who if you think they're gonna win like the video we should get 100 no problem and uh we'll see you on the next one thanks but, but is he just growled <laughs> there we go adios there we go. thanks see you guys <laughs>